Howdy folks, John here. Welcome to part two of the R2-D2 build series. Today we're going to be painting the dome. There's lots to cover. Let's get right into it. Welcome to my makeshift paint booth in a dingy corner of our basement. I've made a little poly surround with an exhaust fan out a nearby window because it's uh, heading into winter here and I suspect a lot of R2 is going to be painted over the winter months. Now paint choice is entirely up to you. You know, I picked stuff that was primarily available locally and what others had uh, recommended on the Astromech forums. You need a sandable filler primer and the idea with a sandable primer is it's quite thick, you put it on, it will fill any minor imperfections and scratches left in the print and then you sand it down so it fills those in, you take the high spots off, the low spots stay in. You may have to do two, even three coats of this stuff. For the silver on the dome, I'm using Rust-Oleum 2X. This is the metallic aluminum color. For the blue, for all the pie plates and other blue accents on R2, this is pretty specific. Most people in the Astromech forums are recommending this uh, Duplicolor Sonic Blue Pearl. And then finally, I'm going to be clear coating all the blue parts and uh, just picked again Rust-Oleum 2X gloss clear for that. And as you can see, I've got some test pieces of failed prints here that I'm just trying to make sure the paints haven't reacted. Now I gotta tell you, out of all the stuff on R2 that I'm most worried about, it's painting. I am a horrible painter. I just, I've never had the knack for it. I rush, I always get runs. If this turns out crappy, it's on me. We won't blame the paint. I've already cleaned this. I've blown it off with air just to get any dust off of it. For the primer, you don't really have to worry though. Because you're going to be sanding it anyway. So I'm told the secret to spray painting so it doesn't turn out to be a complete disaster is several light coats over one or two heavy ones. That's my problem. So we'll just start, I guess, at the top and work our way down. If nothing else, my little paint booth seems to be working okay. Okay, I don't want to go anymore. It's starting to look a little bit wet, so just going to let that dry. First wet sanding of the dome, I'm using 400 grit paper and just some uh, water with a couple of drops of dish soap in it to break the surface tension. And I'm just going to sand this down by hand. And I'm basically wanting to take it right back down to the plastic. So once you've wet sanded down your first coat of primer, you just want to look over the dome for any low spots that uh, the primer didn't fill in. This is really nice and smooth now though, but there's a few spots on these ribs that I obviously missed while I was dry sanding the plastic. And there's these little divots here. There's a few ribs that have got them. There's a rather big one right here as well. I don't know if the camera can pick that up, see if we can hold it at an angle. You can see there's a little divot there. So you just want to look for stuff like that. I'm just going to fill those little divots in with some glazing putty. I think I managed to get that second coat on without any runs. And we've switched to 1000 grit now. And the idea here is we're not taking it right down to plastic like we did on the first coat to fill in all the scratches. Just want to smooth out the primer so it's basically glass smooth for the uh, final top coat. Mmm, smooth as a baby's bottom now after that uh, final 1000 grit wet sand. Really quite happy with the way it came out. If you look at the reflection from the lights here, you can see that it is quite symmetrical and round. There's no ripples or divots in it that I can see. And that was my biggest concern 3D printing a dome because I've seen others, you know, they look wavy where the seam lines are. Of course, we spent a little bit of extra time building each seam line up with the uh, Bondo and I think that really uh, was worthwhile to help 
get rid of those little uneven wiggles and wobbles in it. But no train wrecks, thank goodness, at least yet. So now is where screw-ups cost time and money. Light coats, Johnny. Boy, this silver covers well. Coat number two. No runs. That's got to be a first for me. This stuff covers beautiful. I'm really impressed with this. So now it's time to do all the pies and panels. I've painted everything silver, put two coats of the Rust-Oleum 2X on, and this is with three coats of the pearl blue over top of the silver. And I don't want it to be any darker than that. So here's our three coats on. Quite impressed with the color. Now the final thing is one or two coats of clear. So I've got our two coats of clear on and I probably should have put another coat of primer on. If there's one mistake I made, any little imperfections are just going to keep showing through each layer of paint you put on. So even with the two coats of clear, I don't know if the camera's even picking this up, you can see some little swirl marks that made it through the primer. So again, I should have put three coats of primer on, but there's still a way to save this afterwards if they're not too deep. And that is to polish the clear coat so you take those little ridges and valleys out and you don't get the refraction in them and that's what shows them up. So to do that I've just got my little three inch polishing pad on a hand drill and use whatever polishing compound you like. I just put a little bit on your pad, rub it in, no big deal, and then we're just gonna polish the pie up. So I should mention this clear coat is dried for about three days. You don't want to polish a fresh clear coat. Well, let's see how it looks here now. Wow. Just world's better, almost automotive quality. And that's even before putting the finer polishing paste on to really bring out the shine. Probably wouldn't even have to do it. Time to do the radar eye. So what uh, a lot of people are using are these four inch ornament balls. Okay, they come in two halves, got them on eBay. And of course that will be his radar eye. You paint it black on the inside so you still get the nice sheen on the outside. So all I'm going to do is just put it in the back side of the radar eye here. Just got a uh, X-Acto knife and I'm just going to scribe around the edge where the cut line is so I know where to cut it. And I'm just going to use a Dremel cutoff disc for that. Okay, so here is the scribe line. I don't know if you can see that. And I'm just going to take my Dremel and cut along that. Well, there's kind of what we're looking for. Let's just see if it fits in the eyeball, or if the eyeball fits in the radar eye surround. That should work. I've just got a fairly smooth file. And just clean off the uh, cut edge of that acrylic ball. You could also use some sandpaper. This is just 220 just on a flat surface. Yeah, so now we've just got to paint the inside of it black. But yeah, it should work okay. Didn't have the mic plugged in, so we're doing a voice over here. I'm just showing how I did these small recesses in the radar eye surround using aluminum duct tape. Just cut it to the size 
of the uh, little grooves in here and pressed it in to give it a really clean, sharp aluminum look. And for the inside of the radar eye circle, I've used silver rub and buff to give it an aluminum look. This stuff is really amazing. You'll see it being used more later on the dome. Here's the painted acrylic ball. Just peeling off the uh, masking tape there. Trial fitting it. And it fits really well. There's the front side. Looks pretty decent. And I'm just gonna glue this in with goop glue. The painted sphere has been glued in. It's nice and flush, so this will sit nice and tight against the dome. And there is the finished radar eye assembly. Not too bad. And you'll notice I've already drilled holes and there were holes in the dome before I even started painting it. So I've pre-fit this eye before. And when you start looking at pictures of R2's radar eye, it is all over the place on the dome. It sits usually a little bit crooked. The top can sometimes be level, which means the bottom will be sitting at an angle this way, but that's totally up to you. And you can just glue it on the dome if you wanted, but uh, I decided to screw it on just in case I ever wanted to remove this uh, for repainting or if the sphere got all scratched up, I could uh, take it out and put a new one in. That's one nice thing with goop. It uh, it cuts out fairly easy if I do ever have to remove this. Now it's rub and buff decision time. I actually am quite pleased with the way the dome looks just with the aluminum spray paint on it. I haven't clear coated it or anything. However, I did put some of the uh, silver leaf rub and buff on a couple of the little panels, one of the hollow projector surrounds and the lower rim. And yeah, it looks amazing. So I've decided I will rub and buff the dome. Secret with it is going thin and really rubbing it in. Just use your fingers. Seems the layer, when I was doing these other things, as soon as you've got a layer of the rub and buff on your finger, it's a wax filled with essentially aluminum powder. And when you get a layer on your finger and you're rubbing it, it's just like polishing aluminum on a lathe with aluminum shavings. You're rubbing aluminum against aluminum and that's what brings out the sheen. So I'm not going to bore you with the whole process because this will take some time. I'm just going to do this one little rib on the pie plates. You don't need much of this stuff. And you just evenly coat it. And then you just keep rubbing it. And if you can get a little heat between your finger and the item, that'll even help more. And when it starts shining up, you'll feel it kind of getting a little bit, not really sticky, but it starts grabbing on your finger. And you know at that point it's polishing. And the camera's probably not picking this up. But this is getting quite shiny now. And the more you rub it, essentially the shinier it gets. Main thing is you don't put it on too thick. And you can see on the finger, that's what you want. You want that layer on there. So you're rubbing that layer against the layer that's on the uh, dome or whatever you're putting the rubbing buff on to bring out that sheen. Wow, that came out pretty awesome. And yeah, <laughs> I put the radar eye on. So that's the rub and buff procedure found. You really have to rub it in though. You have to be creating friction and you have to feel heat between your hand and the dome. And that's what seems to really polish this stuff up really shiny. And what's amazing is it even feels like metal. It feels cold to the touch afterwards. It's cool stuff. I'm going to start using this on my scale helicopters a lot more. It's starting to look like R2-D2 now. It's hard to resist the temptation just to loosely fit all the panels and the pies just to see what it looks like. We're getting close to dome completion. All that's left is gluing in the panels, fitting the lights and the hollow projectors. And that's what we're going to be covering in the next video. Until then, thanks for watching folks. We'll see you next time and happy R2 building.